Heroically, Raji turns his archers onto the fleeing Seleucid army to mop up the battlefield, eagerly seeking an undisputed win. The team are now hungry for victory. No, 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 well done. No, we're getting them. Yeah, yeah. Move forward a little bit then. Take Sweet. more of them out. Yeah. They're running away. Yeah, so, so kill them. But shouldn't we be Just concentrating? It's the second century BC. Baying for blood, this celebrity Egyptian team show no mercy. Using their archers, they pick off the remaining beleaguered enemy troops. Shoot them. Ricky, you, and Rick, you've got Ricky on the other side. Just shoot them. Go, be baby. Really, be as aggressive as you can. Right. Can we <laughs> imminent? That's always a good sign. <laughs> oh, my God, sorry. <laughs> Nothing to do with the plan, though. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, Governor. Well done. 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 Thanks, Sam. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Flowers for everyone. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I had 27 men left. I don't know how many I had left. <laughs> so, how did that happen? I'm exhausted. That was quite Was weird. that a good plan, well executed? <laughs> I, th I, th I think we let the experts decide. Well, I, got a bit, I got a bit um, confused at the beginning. And, and as a result, I lost a lot of men very quickly. Mm. Mm. Um, um, but luckily, the archers kind of did the job. We didn't really look after you in the beginning. I you guys were a bit on your own, I think. I, th I, I still think, we let think you down. The, 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 the thing of getting around behind them, although that didn't really... It didn't defeat them. It no. just neutralised that whole piece, yeah. the mm. whole chunk mm. of them. And they, they, you know, then we didn't have to deal with them in the grind. And when it came to it, the grind is where the battle yeah. was actually fought. Yeah. Yeah. Your punch yeah. really worked as oh, well. That was we a came around the although, back of them, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Although yeah. you took lots off the archers, yeah. it, it actually it bust the line mm. open. And then, you know, and then it just turned into a horrible bloodbath. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what our experts, uh, Mark and Eric, thought of your performance. Well, look, it was a victory, so that can't be bad. Yeah, the way you judge oh. a general... <laughs> the way you judge a general is to ask this question, would I want my son or daughter to serve under that general? <laughs> and, and you guys did manage to massacre a lot of the other side, and, and a lot of the people who came here to help you guys win are not going to go home. So you guys went out there... And, no, to be fair, you guys went into what was going to be a meat grinder battle. Yeah. two similar sides coming against each other like that, it was going to be bloody. And you guys fought a good meat grinder battle. And the problem is that, big picture, you came here to fight this battle in the first place in order to extend Egyptian political control a little bit closer to the Seleucid heartland. Problem is, you don't have an army left. <laughs> so you will not, at the strategic level, achieve your aims. So this becomes a Pyrrhic victory. You won the battle, but by winning it, you lose the war. Alec always says that when the teams win. Yeah. I was going to say, we could have instilled, I, I, I could have instilled such fear in the heart of them that everyone else would just give yeah. up without a fight. Mm. Uh, yeah. I, I, I would spin it more favourably for the team. I think in this era, an awful lot of peoples and cities and traders and all these other people clung to who was powerful. Mm. And you did win a victory. And so that ought to have some dividends for you in terms of the geopolitical thing. I mean, it was fascinating watching the battle in three phases. The initial bit where the... Uh, uh, Seleucids committed their war elephants and you dealt with them beautifully. The light troops went in and just killed those elephants. Fantastic. Then a second phase when your phalanx started moving forward and <gasps> there was a flank left hanging in the air and it, 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 we just thought, well, at this point they could get rolled up very, very easily. But you did the right thing, you closed the gap and then my peachiest moment, I think, I was absolutely rooting for you, when you got those elephants to go into the rear of that engaged Seleucid phalanx, you just think, ooh, three tonnes of African elephant <laughs> coming up the back of your phalanx. <laughs> it was a really, it was a really, it was a really beautiful move. And, of course, they just melted away. They were running for home and pleading for mama at that point. Mm. Now, your initial plan frightened the hell out of me because you were going to come in with this big beer gut formation, you know, this, this big bowed formation with every single phalanx exposing its flanks. And then when you actually went out on the field to implement it, you didn't do it. Was that because you suddenly got a brainwave that that would be really bad? 
No, because I think it didn't communicate itself to our lieutenants. Or, or they're smarter <laughs> than the generals. Well, that wasn't that when we kind well, of it didn't start up, very though. quickly as well. We were only half yeah. ready when, yeah. when they started yeah. advancing, so I think it was kind of I thought of you guys were going to play to... fair and I like, have a starter gun or something. Mm. Oh, no, and it's never fair in war. <laughs> <laughs> they were in a good battle line to start with, um, and so when it started, they weren't in bad shape. That's right, you were able to respond to the tactical situation, and that's really what did it for you, because it was really touch and go. And even when you delivered that wonderful elephant attack, you didn't exploit it. The elephants all died, and, and it took a long time for that hole to appear in the enemy ranks. So what really did it for you guys, and, and this is down to the lieutenants, was that they actually managed to maintain their awareness of what was going on on their own corners of the battlefield, mm. And that, that qualified leadership at the, the junior level here mm. is what really won it for you guys, not, not yeah. the, the it, big it, brains at the it top. It paid dividends because in the last phase of the battle, it degenerated into a series of small level actions. Yeah. At that point, good lieutenants can yeah. win the battle. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't, only a good general would allow that to happen, though, Absolutely. right? <laughs> Al said at the beginning he wanted to fight three battles at once. Yeah. Mm. And the only way you could possibly have won by fighting three battles at once was by letting Raji and letting Ricky fight their own war. And, and you did it, and, and that allowed you to win. All right, let's have a look at what really happened. Can cool. you, can you yeah. demonstrate? Right. Yeah. can. So the Seleucids come to this fight, and they start it off. They've got a concentration of the larger number of their elephants, the best cavalry they've got, and the boss, Antiochus III, all on their right-hand side. And they take this concentration of cavalry, elephants, and leadership, and they take that mix and they send it against the Egyptian right. A little more effectively, <laughs> they um, sweep away. We didn't have They sweep away the Egyptian right. But they do that thing that cavalry sometimes do. They keep going, and then, uh, Ptolemy, who's actually with the centre of his army, pretty much where you had him, where he can be seen by his infantry, orders forward his right. And then almost a similar thing happens in reverse. The Egyptian right goes forward and smacks the Seleucid right out of the way. Well, then it's going to turn into a head-on clash between the two infantry arms. That's right. The cavalry are gone, the elephants are gone, and it comes down to the big meat grinder battle. Ptolemy manages to come back to control his battle. Yep. Antiochus is gone. So when it comes right down to it, or it comes right down to the killing and controlling the battle, the thing that you guys manage to do at the end, on it the, doesn't work. Yeah. On the day, the Egyptians, uh, well, they couldn't decide it in the way that you could, but they, uh, they put a, better, uh, a brave enough face on it to conclude it all with a sort of favourable treaty. And uh, Ptolemy goes off, celebrates in the traditional way by marrying his sister. <laughs> <laughs> Antiochus, because he's so far out of the fight, thinks he's won. And when he finally manages to turn his horse around and come back to see the ruins of his army, he gets a rude shock. And he has to conclude a treaty to his disadvantage with Ptolemy, king of Egypt. All right, gentlemen, thanks very much indeed for your assessment. Does, uh, do you wish you'd done it like that? No. <laughs> but we didn't have the option of asking for a treaty, did we? Or a cocktail shaker. <laughs> After the real battle, the Seleucid general Antiochus retreated to his own kingdom. But Ptolemy's victory had little lasting effect in the region. In 198 BC, in the Battle of Panaeus, Antiochus defeated the Egyptian army and the region became part of the Seleucid kingdom never again to be retrieved by the Egyptians. Look, thanks for playing. We'll see you at the BAFTAs. Thank you very Lovely. much. Thank you very <laughs> much. Well done. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.